Hey, what's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint and I play a lot of free to play games and I especially love the shooters. There's so many weird and wacky things you can do, especially when you just jump in with your friends, you know, with the discord links in the description, by the way, if you want to jam with us during the streams, it's just such a, a pleasure. Absolutely. And I know why you guys are looking for these games. I've got a weird mix of genres here as well. One game per genre. This is kind of an all time list, but it's not historic based. This isn't like I'm going to look back at like evolve or block and load as much as I love those games. They're not going to make the list because they have no population and Stuff like Nosgoth doesn't exist anymore. So these are games that are current. Yes, it's all time. It's not just this year. It's not just upcoming or new games, but all time as in you can still freaking play them. These are just uncontestedly, in my opinion, the best free to play shooters. I can do right by you guys with this list. But again, lots of different kinds of shooters, lots of different games. Hopefully you can find one that you can jam to. All right, guys, starting out our list and hopefully setting the tone for the rest of it, we have a murdery, mystery, Saul-like, predator-ish type of game called Deceit. The idea is that one person is a monster, except you don't know who the monster is. It's a co-op shooter game where you are trying to figure out who the monster is, or if you are the monster, just, you know, try to eat the faces of everyone else. Like, no, I'm totally human, guys. Uh, don't worry, I'm not trying to murder you, but, you know, when the lights go out, I might murder you. So Deceit, yeah, it's about, uh, it's a game of Deceit. And there's a few other games like this. It's a whole branching genre that I'm actually really falling in love with right now. So the shooter mechanics is kind of just there as a vehicle, but I do kind of want to explain it away. So because it is first person, you can never look everywhere all at the same time. You're never going to have all of the information. You have to actually follow different people and watch what they're doing and specifically have a specific point of view, which is kind of the point in a shooter. And so, you know, if you're the monster, you can kind of scoot around, hide around. It's kind of a stealthy type of game you want to get the blood make sure no one's watching you and everyone else needs to you know use shooting mechanics to actually solve some different puzzles as they go through the campaign it's actually very important and intertwined but not enough to make it higher on the list but still you know i think it does count as a proper shooter and i think you'll have some fun with it all right, dudes, next up we have War Thunder. Now, another weird game that a lot of people weren't expecting probably on a shooter list, but War Thunder, more than most, if not all of the vehicular combat games, requires aim. And I really actually appreciate its aiming mechanics. It does make it pretty easy to use, even with mouse and keyboard, where a lot of vehicle games, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll use mouse and keyboard for on foot, and then I'll switch to joystick or, you know, something else for the flying. It, it becomes very awkward, but War Thunder really pioneered, I think, a lot of very sane mechanics so that people can really jump into the game. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about the monetization and the grind required in this title, but there's a lot of content. There's a lot to play. There's a lot under the hood mechanically as well a whole lot to digest with this title, uh, let alone its shooting mechanics is actually pretty good. And also considering other vehicular combat games, I feel like there is a great variety despite it being historical based, you know, with the flying, with the tanking, with all of that. And normally if you go to a direct competitor like World of Tanks, you then also have to jump from, you know, World of War planes, World of Warships to get really the proper mix that War Thunder all has right there in a singular free to play package. Next up, coming in at number eight, I have Heroes and Generals. Now, this game almost was dead on arrival. It was really jinky, really awkward, but it had a really cool concept. It's sort of like this meta, mappy, almost an MMO, but not quite exactly kind of game. It's basically Battlefield 1 before Battlefield 1 even came out. It's this historical shooter that's a big team battle, and it has this weird system with this map resource management and very disbalanced, mix-matched matchmaking. It's strange. It is played in lobbies, so don't confuse it with a proper MMO, but it is one of the few historically, you know, aesthetic shooters out there that's also free to play that also has these really big team battle mechanics. So even if it's not the perfect game, I know it has a lot of mixed reviews. It goes up and down. It still has a consistent population just because of its true uniquity. And this kind of genre has some pretty hardcore fanatics. So if you like this stuff, if you got a hard on for this kind of stuff, I can't believe you're not already playing Heroes and Generals. Next up, we have Planet Side 2. Now, the tragedy of Planet Side 2 and why it's not higher, despite it being an MMO, which is hella unique, there's barely any first person MMOs, let alone a proper full FPS MMO. Planet Side 2, though, has a waning population, and I'm not really too sure of why that is. I wish the graphics were enhanced a little bit, but I'm only being so critical as soon as we're starting this out because Planet Side 2 could have been so amazing, so big, and it kind of used to be. But in the end, it actually is still pretty easy to just jump in immediately and get 
get some big action that you're not going to get pretty much in any other game. You're not going to have these numbers. You're not going to have this explosivity. You're not going to have this insanity, which is maybe a reason why a lot of noobs get wrecked. That's okay, though. In the end, I think there's a lot of progression. There's a lot of content with the different vehicles. There's so much to master in this game, actually. And just the fact that it is the only, in my opinion, proper MMO FPS is why, even though it does have a waning population, it's still on the list because you can still play it at least technically. And what you're going to play, you're not going to get that anywhere else. Alright guys, we got a game that has been in a few top 10s, and that's going to be Warbrokers.io. That's right guys, a browser-based shooter is making the list of my favorite top 10 free-to-play shooters. As somebody who really loves competitive, very serious shooters, I'm also, as you can tell from the list so far, somebody who really appreciates uniquity, originality, and just playing different things, and of course, being free. When you want to play a free game, you want to have easy access to it, and there's literally nothing more easier to access than a free-to-play game that's played in the browser. You just type in warbrokers.io, and boom! You know, you join in with your Discord, join in with your party, your guild, whatever, and you're having a big team battle blast here with Warbrokers. So it's very reminiscent of something like Battlefield Heroes. It's not as cheesy, it's a little bit more down-to-earth. Kind of reminds me of Battlefield 2 with a lot of the map design, and of course, the vehicles, you know, from helicopters to the, you know, the tanks, and then you have the modern era of weapons, but it's still in this really cheesy, cartoony, blocky R style that, I don't know, I think it actually looks really clean. I think it runs pretty freaking great. I tested out all the other browser shooters, some older, some newer, and in the end, I'm gonna have to say Warbrokers is my favorite uh, browser-based shooter, and it's definitely in the contention of top 10 free-to-play shooters of all time. All right, dudes, halfway on our list now, we have Unturned. This is basically what Daisy wish it could have been. <laughs> This game came out of nowhere. It actually started spawned from a Roblox uh, mini game that they, this guy created. It was actually a younger man, and uh, he just kind of made this little zombie game. Then it turned into a full-fledged game. He produced it, put it on Steam, and ever since then, he's been updating it and crafting it into something freaking awesome, actually, that's still really popular. Now, it does have this really cheesy R style, but as you know, I like that kind of thing. I like, you know, games that are really clean, easy to go, anybody of any age can play. Absolutely, Unturned is basically the H1Z1 DayZ, the War Z Infection, survival story. all those other games basically try to do way too much bit off way more than they can chew and unturned just actually just spit out something freaking good instantaneously a lot of those games had really janky vehicles or none at all unturned was the first to put them in unturned was like the first to actually come out actually be free to play actually you know work so that's why it's so high on the list that's why it's so popular but not only does it just happen to work but it actually has a lot of really interesting mechanics, a lot going for it, and I think you guys should definitely be checking it out if you haven't because you thought, oh, it's just for kids. It's a kid's Daisy. No, actually, this is what Daisy wish it could have turned into. Yeah, we're going to talk about Team Fortress 2 now, the big bad four here. It's a little lower in the list because it's kind of a little bit dated. There's some direct competitors, free to play or otherwise, that I think do the job better, at least in terms of competition. But with Team Fortress 2, will maybe always have an edge on is gonna be those custom servers. Those weird wacky surfing maps, those weird game modes like the Halloween PVE competitive stuff. And we're actually seeing direct inspiration of that being put into Overwatch and some other games. But Team Fortress 2 has Man vs. Machine, which I could have put on some other action tower defense -y type of games, but no, Team Fortress 2 Man vs. Machine is still pretty quite legitimate. And I have a lot of fun with that as well. So it's a very core shooter that I think everyone should have tried at least one time or another. Now, now, whether you stay playing it because you're a competitive shooter or you like the custom games or whatnot, I don't know. There are some other games that can do some things better. I feel like Team Fortress 2 might have lost its way just a little bit with its age and they're trying to do this new competitive season thing. I'm unsure about that, but what I am sure of is that Team Fortress 2 still does casual chaos better than any other shooter, free to play or otherwise. Number three, I'm gonna put Ninjas in Space. I'm putting Warframe. Now, Warframe is on a shooter list because it happens to be a shooter. I know there's a lot of melee, I know there's a lot of freaking magical abilities, but when Excalibur presses number four, whips out the light energy blade sword that shoots out other energy blade swords, the game becomes kind of a little bit ridiculous, and that's the point. No other shooter that I've ever played has been this freaking bonkers. 
I mean, you have some uh, very strange weapons in the game as well, where you're like shooting little slime balls that then explode later. You have like this boomerang weapon melee thing that you throw and then comes back to you. And of course, all the different abilities that interact with even some usual weapons, like you can have a sniper rifle. That's not too different, right? But then you have Volt who throws down a shield, so you have to shoot through the shield to get the extra damage and all, just a lot of different stuff with all the different crazy enemies. It's a little bit lower on the list, though, I have to admit, because it's a horde shooter. It's a wave survival type of game where you can just kind of lamely, you know, you get your Grokthas and you, you just spit it out. You just aim in a direction, you kill hundreds of enemies, but playing Warframe to the fullest, using all the different weapons, fighting all these different enemies with their different damage types, hitting them in the different areas, uh, you know, aiming these different very strange weapons very differently, it can be amazing, a phenomenal experience if you are a shooter fanatic like I am. Hey guys, number two, I'm putting Paladins. Now I got some strong feelings against and for Paladins, so I don't really know what I can tell you. I really wanna spend like multiple videos just ranting about Paladins, good and bad. But here I'm gonna tell you why it's my number two, okay? It is a free-to-play shooter, and it's the free-to-play shooter that you can actually take a little bit seriously. Some people just laughed. Keyboard warriors, typing in the comments below, I know. Paladins has had a rocky history, Hi-Rez as a whole has had a rocky history, especially with free-to-play shooters, Rest in Freaking Pieces, Global Agenda, and mainly Trav's Ascend, I know, and Paladins might have a little bit of a downward trend, but I think it's actually gonna have a resurgence, and I think it's gonna be better, and even though it's got a lot of copy-pasty kind of elements to it, in the end, it's a free-to-play shooter that does have a competitive scene that is super easy to jump into, that's very colorful, very casual, and I'm a big fan of hero shooters as a whole. Sure, Overwatch is uncontestedly the number one, but Paladins has a lot of redeeming features that are just kind of hidden behind a lot of schemey monetization, some copy-pasty kind of stuff, but there is some cool stuff there. That's all I have time to say. Just trust me on this one, guys. You've seen my previous videos on Paladins, right? So coming from me, normally someone who's kind of against what Paladins is going for, I gotta tell you, on my top 10 free-to-play shooters list, I couldn't put it any lower. All right, guys, before we get to number one, we got some honorable mentions. Now, I do this for genres and top tens that I really deeply care about. So hopefully, you guys, thumbs up, you know, share the video, subscribe if you haven't did it yet. I don't know. And <laughs> let's just listen. OK, these games, they're kind of fading or they're weird. They didn't quite fit the list, I think, but I think you're going to have some fun with them regardless. So the first one actually probably should have been on the list, maybe a little bit. It's called Black Squad. OK, but I didn't put it on the list because obviously you've seen the rest of it. You know, I really care about uniquity, you know, ingenuity. And Black Squad is your usual modern military shooter. The difference, though, is that it works. Like, it actually runs great. Its netcode is decent, and it's got a lot of content. So there's a lot of them out there from, like, Warface. Uh, you know, you have your old, much, old, much older ones, like Ava and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 all those things, and then the ones that have come between it and faded in and out and died. No, 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 I think you wanted something a little bit newer. Yeah, it's the same old, same old, but it also is like good same old, same old. It actually runs and that's Black Squad. So, you know, don't discount it just because it looks the same. It's actually maybe a cut above the rest. Next up for honorable mention, we have Robocraft. Now, it, I really wanted to put this on the list, but I couldn't because I see the populations going down and they just put up a free to play Battle Royale Robocraft and it's got mostly negative reviews, and that really kills me, because me and my son had so much fun with Robocraft, and when I originally played Robocraft, I was, I don't know, I was enthralled. I thought it was like, oh, World of Tanks plus Legos or Minecraft, oh, hell yeah, let's play this, dude. It kind of reminded me of like, uh, I don't know, Lego racers or something like that, but now we have mechs, we have like all these different weapons from, of course, the different machine guns, sniper rifles, and like, you can have healing and stuff, you have different roles, you have different shields, you can even go freaking melee, really? Ridiculous stuff. And Robocraft is a very unique game, very strange, and I'm sure there's some other games you can say Cross Out is kind of similar in some ways, but Robocraft for me, especially as a shooter, you do have to actually aim at different parts of robots. You actually blow off different chunks of the robots, so there is some extra aimed mechanics to this vehicular combat game, but it only makes it as an honorable mention because of its now lower population. And finally, for honorable mention, let's just talk about Snipers vs. Thieves. So it didn't make the list because it's asymmetrical in the fact that like there's only one sniper. Now you can just dedicatedly play it as a sniper and that's awesome. You have lots of fun gadgets to use against the thieves. You can freeze them in place. Of course you do have headshots, normal shots, and the thieves have their own gadgets as well that uh, you actually play sort of an aim game with too. We get to shoot down rockets and you know if they put on a safe outfit then you have to shoot through the uh, safe and then you get the headshot or you know there's a lot of ridiculous play with that but it really focuses on placement aim style so even though it is a mobile fps 
it's actually very serious and legitimate. So coming from an arena shooter background competitively, yeah, I gotta say, snipers versus thieves, if you wanna play aim-based content, it's actually very serious uh, when it comes to shooting. All right, guys, you should have seen this one coming. Number one's gonna be Fortnite. Obviously, it literally is the most popular game. Like right now, it's the fastest growing game. It is a shooter, it's free to play. Mobile, PS4, Xbox, right? And then your PC, cross-platform between like all of it if you want. Crazy stuff. And a lot of the stuff that I, I've been promoting these games for that, that I've been spotlighting, like really clean art style, really weird, wacky weapons, lots of different ways to play the game, and at the same time being casual, being free, easy to get into, but also still competitive. Yeah, pretty much every bonus from all the games that I've talked about so far, Fortnite has that and maybe more. And it's something really special to talk about Fortnite because it did something that almost no other game has ever done, where there was a Titan, PUBG. And then it stood on the shoulders of that Titan and then jumped off in to now unknown horizons. We have ridiculous building mechanics, which acts as an amazing counter mechanic to the dynamic of shooting, where instead of just dodging or just hide and seek, you now can literally build up entire towers as you try to outbuild somebody and out aim them. So the 1v1 mechanics in this game are legit esport worthy. I mean, have you seen those John Wick skins? They're crazy, but Fortnite also has just a wealth of awesome weapons that they're consistently adding onto. We just got controlled freaking rockets, which BTW, you can ride rockets in this game. Fortnite, yeah, it's cartoon, it's colorful, and that's fun. It's easy to get into. It's one versus 99, it's chaos, but it's also something to be taken very, very seriously, which its competitors probably wish they did sooner. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for my list. I gave you a lot of games, but also I'm gonna pin a comment in the comment section down below where you can check out some other games. I think that it's gonna be hard to find matches, but if you can get a group together, you can still have a good time with those, and hopefully you do, because I think those games were beloved and they were loved by me. Anyways, guys, that's it. Those are my 10 games. Please go try them out, and if you found a new one, I don't know, give it a thumbs up or something. Yeah, all the YouTube jazz, of course. Click the bell for it, tell when you know I'm gonna go live and, uh, you know, appeal some eyeballs on the Patreon, like, Subscribe! Yeah, I don't know what to say. Outro out, right? Thanks for watching. Keep the hype alive. See you again next time.